Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we're going to check out another Mattel Jurassic World Dino Trackers figure. This is a newer one that has just begun hitting stores, mostly Rite Aids it seems. I haven't heard of anybody finding them elsewhere other than Rite Aid, which is like the most random place for these to show up. But this is part of the Danger Packs, and as you can see, we've got the Nothosaurus. And this is one that I was really excited about because... It was definitely a species that I was really not expecting, at least until Camp Cretaceous had come out. Once Camp Cretaceous had displayed the Nothosaurus, I thought there would definitely be a chance that we could get one, but actually at that point, we had already heard rumblings of the figure. However, it wasn't really confirmed, but now obviously it is, because we have it right here before us, and you can see it looks pretty nice for sure. As far as what we can see, it might actually be one of the standout Mattel figures, but we won't really be able to tell that until we get a closer look. But you can see that the packaging for the Danger Packs is pretty much exactly what you would expect it to be. We again have the image of Velociraptor Blue in beta like we've had for pretty much all of these. And similar to the recent Chronosaurus for our Nothosaurus, we've got kind of like a background image here of an ocean setting. But uh, very, very nice looking packaging. And then here on the back, you basically have a checklist of the other figures that are in this wave of danger packs. And uh, definitely excited to get through all of them here on the channel. But right now, our main focus is this guy. So let's pop the Nothosaurus out and check it out. So here is our Nothosaurus figure. And it is really, really quite nice, like actually quite beautiful. And I think it nicely replicates the version that we see from Camp Cretaceous specifically. It definitely has a similar look to it. The only thing I'm immediately picking up on that I wish it had that it does not would be a little area of articulation right here in the neck. It would have been nice to be able to kind of articulate that spot. We have articulation, of course, down at the bottom of the neck, but right here uh, has a nice bend to the neck, but it can't move elsewhere you know it would be nice to have been able to kind of articulate that spot but again being a danger pack figure it's not surprising that it doesn't have that type of articulation because they aren't usually the most you know articulated or impressive jurassic world figures but again for what it is it definitely looks really really nice so let's jump to a closer look at it right now so starting up here at the head sculpt you can straight away see that we do have some very nice looking skin texture some nice looking scale detail very reptilian like scale detail kind of like what i would expect to see on a nothosaurus so that's a plus we have a very nice dark tone of color like a really dark brown for the face and the head area you can see the eyes painted with a yellow giving a nice black pupil i do like the eye paint it looks pretty good interestingly enough though you can see the pupils in the center of the eye over here this side the pupil not so much which leads me to believe that maybe this one has kind of a little bit of a paint mishap, but I actually like that the pupil's a little bit further forward because it looks like the Nothosaurus is really determined and almost angry looking so straightforward. But again, the detail looks really nice. You have a few clusters of kind of like larger scales here on the lower jaw. Of course, you've got an articulated jaw, which can open exceptionally wide, like super, super wide. We have a really nice looking tongue sculpt in there. Not too much as far as texturing goes for the tongue sculpt, but it looks pretty good. Nice tone of color chosen. We also have, again, that nice gloss coat. Unfortunately, we don't have that nice pinkish tone for the upper side of the inside of the mouth, but only the skin here on the inside of the mouth and then the tongue area. The teeth look pretty good, but they're, of course, big and bulky. But being a toy, you know, you can't really get away with having sharp teeth, so that's pretty much as you would expect for a Mattel toy. They do have kind of an interlocking aspect to them there, so you can see that, which does also look really quite nice. They're painted with kind of like a light yellowish tone, which helps to add a little bit of realism to them, and they also have a nice gloss coat to them. You can also see the nostrils up there on the snout, as well as some nice looking detailing there around the eye for our Nothosaurus. As you start to move back here into the neck region, you can see more of that really nice scale detail. You can also see some kind of creasing and stuff here wrinkling in the skin. You can also, though, take notice to the fact that we are transitioning away from that darker tone and leading to a lighter tone. And we have a nice lighter gray for the majority of the body after this point. But you also have kind of this lighter tone here on the underside, kind of like a, almost like a khaki or a beige type color here for the lower jaw. And you can see it also does run down the course of the neck. You can see the throat is sculpted out very nicely. And what I do like about this lighter tone is 
Many times with Mattel figures, we only get it like down to the throat or something. We don't get it all the way through. But this actually runs pretty far through the course of the body. You can see very nice looking on the underside. Also, you can see how nice the skin texture looks. But you can see it leads all the way out here before disappearing. Very abrupt transition, but uh, before disappearing as we lead out into the tail. So it is nice to have, again, that coloration pretty far out into the figure. You can see it here overtakes probably like half of the stomach region as well. Leading back here into the body, you can again see some more really nice, again, very reptilian-like scaling throughout the course of the figure. As you'll lead down, you've got some nice muscle definition. Again, you can really pick out how nice that scale detail looks in that front leg. Really vibrant detailing on this as per usual. And you can also see that we've got some scoots running down the course of the toes. No specific nail paint, but they're a grayish tone, so they don't like look super awkward or anything without any actual paint on them. They look okay. But as you lead up here into the stomach region, again, you can see that there is a speckling, or at least I'm picking up on it here and there on the figure. So on top of the grayish tone, we also have kind of like a black speckling throughout. And there is the Jurassic Facts app code, so I might as well pop that out while we are in this spot. And there you go, if you would like to add the Nothosaurus to your collection. But again, we continue to have them up here on the top, which isn't my favorite way of doing it, but it is what it is at this point. As you lead back, you again have some nice muscle definition in the rear legs. You can see the calf muscle specifically is really quite flexing right there. You've got the kneecap. You also have the elbow present on the front leg. But uh, again, decent looking foot sculpt, but it's a little hard to see because of the positioning of this leg. It's all like scrunched up and kind of uh, obscuring the foot sculpt back here similar to the Dimetrodon from Mattel and the way that they sculpt out the legs in that one where it kind of like it's just squishing the foot but as you lead back you again have a pretty nice looking tail sculpt throughout again some more of those kind of uh, dark speckles I think they're a little bit more vibrant actually here out on the tail like you can really see them maybe a little more abundant and you can also see we have a nice curve to the tail as you lead out into that area and then again of course you're going to see pretty much the same thing over here on the opposing side there's not really a whole lot going on that would differentiate the figure over here from the other side you can see both of the front legs are almost in the same position slightly different i would say one thing though that is different is this rear leg is really stretched back rather than kind of scrunched up like we see over there you can still kind of uh see a little bit of the foot sculpt but it's also still kind of obscured because of the positioning of the leg but it is much further stretched back compared to what we see on the opposing leg again nice looking sculpt and detail throughout though on this side as well so definitely a really really cool figure and honestly it's probably one of the nicest ones from the dino trackers line overall just because it's a really cool species choice and a really unexpected species choice that they really did do a very good job on as far as articulation again we've got the articulated jaw which like we saw can go really really wide we also have articulation in the neck can go down and up but unfortunately, again, no articulation in that spot, which I would have liked to have seen. We have articulation in the legs, so you can get a pretty good swimming pose for your Nothosaurus if you choose to try that. And then, of course, the rear leg as well can do the same. No articulation out away from the body, only forward and back. And then, of course, a swivel tail, which is pretty much useless. But we always have that swivel tail. So that's really about it as far as articulation goes. As far as a size, it's, again, a danger pack, which is basically like the you know, attack pack, wild pack type style figure. So it's going to be right there in that same similar size range. You are looking at about the seven and a half inch range or around 19 centimeters in length. And then the positioning of the head is just not up all the way, I think. So you could alter the height a little bit, but roughly around three inches or around seven and a half centimeters for a height for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our danger pack not the saurus and you can see that again pretty much exactly where you would expect it in the size range that it is you can see it's very similar in size to the colovasaurus maybe a little bit longer and stuff but fairly similar in size again because the colovasaurus was like an attack pack type figure so it's going to fall right there in that same size range. And to further show you that, we've got the Dilophosaurus and Velociraptor from Mattel. These figures are pretty much always right there in the same similar size range that, you know, every other Dilophosaurus and every other Velociraptor outside of like the 12-inch basic versions usually are. So this should, again, help to give you a pretty good idea of the size of the Nothosaurus. But honestly, if you've been collecting Mattel for a little while now you probably already have a good idea of the size so this brand new Mattel danger pack Jurassic World Dino Trackers 
Nothosaurus is definitely another really fun figure from Mattel. And honestly, when it comes to this size range and this type of figure, you know, like the Wild Pack, the Attack Pack, and now Danger Pack type figures, it's definitely one of the nicest, I think, that we've seen in a very long time because it just sculpt-wise is beautiful. Like, it has a lot of really, really nice detail, as it usually does. Very impressive, very vibrant detail overall. But on top of the really nice detail, it also has a pretty screen accurate appearance, I think, to what we see in Camp Cretaceous as far as the Nothosaurus goes. I feel like they nailed it as far as the appearance to this figure. So that's also a huge plus. And then we also have some pretty nice paintwork. The paintwork is, again, nothing to write home about. It's not like they did some sort of crazy, amazing, intricate design. But it's nice and naturalistic. It's really smooth as far as the transitions go. And we have paint from like the head almost all the way out there on the underside to the tail, which looks really good. And then the coloration of the rest of the body as far as like the grayish tone also looks good. Again, pretty much what I would expect. I wouldn't think a Nothosaurus would have some sort of crazy, really flashy design. So this does look, again, really nice and natural to me. And we also have that kind of speckling throughout, which helps to add just a little extra coloration to it. But on top of that, you also have articulation. The articulation, though, isn't really that great. We have pretty much your standard when it comes to this type of figure, so it's kind of what you would expect. But I really wish we had that one section of the neck to have just a little extra articulation. Would have been pretty cool for this figure. But again, outside of just that one tiny little complaint about the articulation, it's a really, really nice figure and definitely one that I recommend picking up. So if you happen to have a Rite Aid near you, I would say head on over there and see if you can snag yourself some of these danger packs. If not, hopefully they'll start to show up at Walmart and Target sometime in the near future. So make sure you grab this if you can and make sure you also like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.